Okay, uh, this is going to be a quick demonstration of NKP showing how uh, we can scale the resource oriented abstraction between multiple machines. So this is going to be an example of a, of a highly scaled uh, connection uh, to, a, to a data center server running, running NetKernel with a number of clients which are going to be running uh, or simulated running behind a, a firewall and a NAT. Uh, the idea is that this is a good example uh, for utility companies and such where there's going to be a large number of uh, outside connections on home hubs, that kind of thing, uh, connecting up uh, one into a permanent connection to the data center. And we want to show how we can give real time bidirectional secure communication between them. OK, so just to give you a quick run through of the architecture of this demo, we have a, a net kernel instance running on a data center in Amsterdam using DigitalOcean. It's a very small instance server with only 512 meg of RAM. Uh, connecting to that, we have a netkernel uh, client, which is running on uh, my laptop here. And uh, that's going through my, through my NAT router and a firewall, connecting over the internet to, to the data center. Uh, and running on that demo client, we've got a uh, simulation of multiple uh, physical clients uh, which, which will connect up through NKP via this route. Now each client runs in its own address space with its own NKP client connecting up. So every every client that we instantiate in this demo has its own uh, unique network connection to simulate as close as we can to it being a truly independent client. So uh, what the idea of this demo is, is that we're going to simulate the idea that every client is a, a household with a single uh, power switch which can be turned on and off uh, by the client. And so the data center can know about or will know about what the state of each of the switches are in each, each home. And it also has the ability to control those. So when the home hub uh, starts up, or the NKP client in this case, uh, it'll try and establish a connection with the data center, which it will try and maintain even through network outages and restarts and that kind of thing. And it will uh, reflect its state back up to the data center. Now also the data center can uh, can send messages back down to the client to control that, uh, control that light switch. So uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a couple of web clients which connect both the client and the server to reflect their state because obviously what's happening is going on internal within the processes. Normally that wouldn't be reflected but in this case to make it a useful demo we'll actually show what's happening. So let's take a look. We have two two windows open here. One of them is, the, uh, is a view onto the server which is connecting up to our data center instance and the other one is a connection to our local local uh, machine here showing the client. Now what I can do is uh, select a number of clients which I want to start here and when I click start they'll appear. Uh, each one of these squares represents a, a unique uh, instance. Red meaning it's switched off, green meaning it's switched on and there's grey there as we initially saw as it was starting up that means that it's that the connection is there but it doesn't have a connection. Uh, sorry, the instance is there, but it doesn't have a connection. So we can see now that both our server and our client are reflecting the same state, showing there that we have uh, all these clients connected. Now we can toggle these. So let's take a look. And we'll see that the state is reflected on the server. And we can toggle on the server. Let's take a different one. And we can see there the state is reflected. Uh, so that's a quick example of what the basic use case is. Uh, what we also want to do maybe is show that we can uh, that we can disconnect all the clients, uh, kick them all off, and then this is, for example, if we're rebooting the server or if there's a lost network connection, all the clients will go down, and then they'll re-establish their connections again. So you can see that's pretty quick. Uh, we can also physically take the server offline and that will cleanly disconnect all the uh, all the clients. We can see there they're all getting slowly disconnected. Here we go, they're all still there grayed out wanting to connect again. So when we bring the server back online, we should see them slowly reconnect. 
Obviously, they only pulled periodically to check if the server's there, but uh, there they go. All connected now. Uh, so the other thing we can do is we can switch off. One of the use cases is to switch off all the clients, make them so they're taking up no power. So we've just implemented this here. We can see how that reflects. So that, this gives an insight into the into the architecture here. When we when we click switch off, the the clients are all switched off pretty quickly, uh, and then their state is then re-reflected back up to the server. Uh, so let's just switch off one instance now. If we double click on one of these. Can switch it off. There we go. Uh, two seven three eight has disappeared. If we switch it back on now, see we've created a new instance now. Two seven three nine, and that's reflected on on here. So we've got quite a lot of uh, flexibility here showing what showing what's going on. Let's uh, let's now try and show this demo uh, in a couple of ways quickly. So let's disconnect all of these. Let's show us here connecting up a, a much larger instance. Let's try uh, 2000. And one of the limitations of this demo is the uh, is the network bandwidth. Uh, the problem is that uh, I'm just connecting over a, over an ADSL, and the upload speed is pretty slow, so uh, it tends to limit the messages coming back. Okay, so we can see here that pretty much all the clients are now connected, and uh, here we go, we've got 2048, hopefully soon, all connected. This has been tested up to over uh, over 10,000 connections. The limitation appears to be the, uh, the network connectivity, and I think mainly that is due to the due to all the clients running in one box, which, which you know is a bit of an artificial example. Okay, so the last part of this demo is to show how, uh, show how we can also uh, simulate a real button and a real world example just to make things a bit more tangible. So let's just start up a couple of connections here on this logical client. Okay, and then what we have here is a uh, physical Raspberry Pi, which uh, has a hardware button with an LED in it. And the idea is that it simulates this soft client in exactly the same way, but with a real uh, net kernel instance running uh, on this Raspberry Pi with NKP on it. What we'll do, we'll connect up the network to it, and we'll see that this flashing light, which shows it's not connected, should uh, should turn to either fully on or fully off, uh, depending on whether the connection, whether the switch is on or off. So let's see. There we go. So it's on. We've got connection two there appearing. It doesn't appear on the client, but it appears on the server, and the light here is on. So if I toggle the light, the light switch is off, and the physical button and switches to red on the server. There we go, and the same thing, if we toggle it on the server side, we switch the light on, on the physical instance. And if we hold the button for a couple of seconds, I believe it is, then let go, we should disconnect it. There we go, so it's disappeared off the server and now it's flashing. Let's switch it back on again. Flashing fast to show it's connecting. And there we go, it's on. Okay, so I hope this uh, demonstration has been useful and it gives you a good idea of what the NKP protocol and NetKernel resource-oriented abstraction is capable of. Thank you.